Thank you all for your testimony. Corporate America has a diversity problem. Boards and executive offices across the United States do not look like the people of this country. Uh, I've conducted four surveys focused on Fortune 100 companies since 2010. My latest survey revealed that since 2010, women and people of color have only made marginal gains in representation on corporate boards. Women have made the greatest gains, but only about a 5% increase in the number of board seats they occupy. And to put that in perspective, in 2017, I found that women represented 24.5% of corporate board members, and yet they are half of the population. People of color represent fewer than 21% of corporate directors, with women of color representing only 5.6% of those directors. This lack of representation is simply unacceptable. I was originally hopeful that the SEC would help address this problem through its 2009 diversity disclosure rule. Unfortunately, the 2009 rule failed to even define diversity, and it gives companies far too much discretion on what they report. That's why I'm pleased to introduce a bill with Representative Meeks to improve the SEC rule earlier this year. My legislation, S360, the Improving Corporate Governance Through Diversity Act, requires public companies to disclose specific information related to the racial, gender, ethnic, makeup, and status veteran, uh, veteran status of corporate boards and senior management to the SEC. My bill will increase corporate transparency allow investors to gain better insight into board makeup and any policies in place to promote diversity among the board and senior management. Now, from my view, corporate diversity is not just morally right. Corporate diversity makes financial sense. McKinsey and company studies have consistently found that greater diversity on executive teams has led to greater profitability. The need for increased corporate diversity is not an act of benevolence, but a necessity for businesses looking to compete in a diverse 21st century America. So uh, with that as, as a predicate, Ms. Lafkin Korsko, how does disclosing uh, specific details about corporate board diversity, racial, gender, and otherwise help investors in making informed uh, investment and voting decisions? Thank you, Senator. Um, you know, from an investor perspective, we, we look at U.S. businesses and we know that they operate in, in complex and very diverse ecosystems. <laughs> And in order for, for senior management to be able to, to respond to, to consumer demand and to manage their very diverse workforces, they need to be led by people who understand the interests of those populations. And so from an investor perspective, when we see a lack of diversity in the corporate boardroom, we understand that the, the leadership is not bringing a, a, a a, a complete understanding of the markets in which they operate and the employees that they are trying to manage into their day-to-day -day decision making. And as you referenced, there, there's emerging data that we're seeing come out regularly that shows that uh, more diversity actually contributes to, to better investment performance. So it makes financial sense. Mr. Quadman, I'm pleased to have the endorsement of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce on my legislation. I'm, uh that's maybe a first for me. But uh, we're always happy to find ways to work together on sure. S360. Can you talk about the benefits of, and I know Senator Warner's, uh, his ears perked up, uh, the benefits of enhanced transparency regarding the specific makeup of corporate boards and how companies select board members and senior management? Sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Menendez, for your leadership on this issue. Uh, and we appreciate uh, the bill and, and our ability to work with you on that. Uh, we believe it is very important for boards as well as senior management to reflect their employee base, their consumer base, and it is also very important to have a diversity of background and thought uh, within the boardroom. Um, we, we do believe that uh, business has been, some businesses have done a very good job in addressing these issues, others have been very slow. We actually worked with Carolyn Maloney uh, back in 2016 on her gender diversity bill and have strongly supported that. Um, we also think that your bill, in terms of collecting of best practices, as well as some of the transparency and disclosure procedures, not only will allow investors to better understand what's going on, but also to help ensure that uh, other companies that have been maybe a little slower 
in addressing these problems can be put on a track to solving these uh, solving these issues. Well, I appreciate that. It, 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 just taking one dimension of this, uh, with the Hispanic community, the largest minority in the nation, trillion plus domestic marketplace spending, younger by a decade than the rest of the American population, more brand loyal than any other group in America, I, I'd like to be on them like white and rice if I was uh, selling a product or a service, because not because of my, uh, you know, uh, uh, desires to do the right thing, but it's just the right economic thing, and you know how to penetrate those markets better when, in fact, uh, you have people diverse on the board who can give you insights into that market. Lastly, on a separate note, I'd just like to briefly state that I'm concerned about one of the bills under consideration today, H.R. 4537. The bill's language dilutes our U.S. negotiators' ability to work in international settings to support and defend our state-based system of regulation as international insurance standards are being developed. We should be at the negotiating table in as strong a stance as possible, so I would not support language restricting any leverage we might have with other international players. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.